So, we talked about uh, a single particle on which a force acts and the particle moves in certain path and we defined a quantity f dot d l. So, if uh, the particle is here at a certain time and then uh, it moves to a nearby point which we call d l vector, this is the displacement in this small time and during this the force acting on the particle is some f. So, you can ask what is f dot d l and you know essentially this is called the work done by the force during this is displacement f dot d l. If the force acting on the particle is f and uh, the displacement of the particle is d l small displacement infinitesimal displacement. So, that uh, we do not have to worry about variation of this f during this displacement and a change in direction of the particle during this displacements we do not have to worry about those things. This quantity is also called uh, work done by the force during this displacement. Now, the important point was that if I take a finite displacement, if I take a finite time in which this particle goes from here to say somewhere here and this is b and I can ask what is the total value of sum of this f dot real on this path, on this path, on this path, on this path, on this path. I mean I go along with the particle, I take each small infinitesimal part here, calculate this f dot real and do it for the entire path from A to B and then sum all these things, this we call integration. But we will not write A here and B here from A to B because this particular path is also important. I can also go along some other path and still reach here and I can ask what is f dot d l here, what is f dot d l here, what is f dot d l here, what is f dot d l here and so on and entire path you do this f dot d l and reach l and these may or may not be equal. So, we say that it is on path 1, certain path is to be specified on which path I have to calculate all these things. So, this is path 1, let us say this is path 1, this is path 2, there may be infinite such paths connecting A and B. Now, there are two possible situations, one is same for all path. All paths connecting A and B, the end points must be same. We start at A and we finally stop our uh, this integration or this addition at B. So, if it is same for all paths, such forces are called conservative forces. Force is conservative. And remember even if there is no particle going on the path, but I know that if a particle is here this will be the force on it, if a particle is here this will be the force on it, if the particle is here the force will be this, if the particle is here the force is this. Even then I can calculate this quantity f dot d l d l need not be the actual displacement of the particle. I can just draw a path and then construct ok here this is the d l, this is d l, here this is d l. I can construct all these d l's along the path and I, I know that if the particle is here this will be the force, if the particle is here this will be the force I can calculate this f dot d l. So, whether the force is conservative or not for that uh, I need not have the physical particle, the force by itself I can say that uh, it is conservative or it is non-conservative and if it is not then it is non-conservative right. If it is if it is not same for all paths remember all 
it may be same for 10 different paths it may be same for 10 different paths but for 11th part if it is different then uh, then this condition will apply this condition will not so this is called non conservative we say that force is non conservative okay now if the force is conservative if the force is conservative and then you take a closed loop that means i start from a point a and go round uh, somewhere on some path and reach once again a that means a and b are the same we start at a do this f dot dl here do this f dot dl here do this f dot dl here and here and here and here and here and here and here stop adding here it is a closed loop what we can do we can take uh, some point b somewhere on this path and then uh, this f dot dl this let us call it path 1 and this is path 2 so this f dot dl on path 1 and now the path is what path 1 means you are going from a and stopping at b and path 2 means you start at a and stop at b so connecting the same points a and b so this should be equal to f dot dl on path 2 conservative force we assume that we are talking of a conservative force in that case these two paths are same now if i invert the arrows of this path to everywhere what will happen each f dot dl will become negative of itself right because here what is the force that is fixed that you do not have any control on that if the particle is here this will be the force but dl it is up to you you can take this as dl or you can take this as dl so if you invert all these uh, arrows here and make it like this make it like this what will happen what will happen now it is the other side is the other way this is f dot dl and let me call it path 3 remember now path 3 starts at b and ends at a because these are the kind of dl we are taking so this is path 3 which is different starts at b and then it goes this way this way this way this way this way and reaches here and path 2 is start from here on that same geometrical line it goes this way 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 and reaches here every dl becomes minus dl and therefore these two are negative of each other now bring this thing here so you have f dot dl on path 1 plus f dot dl on path 3 equal to 0 and what is this path 1 and then path 3 and we are you are adding path 1 means you are going from a to b along this line and reaching here and then path 3 means you are going from b to a along this line and reaching here so you are going on the closed loop you start at a and you again reach at a after going through this closed loop so this whole thing is f dot dl on a closed loop and for that we put a circle here to tell that it is a closed loop and this is zero valid for all closed loops so this can be taken as another identifying equation whether the force is conservative or not if this f dot dl integration line integration is zero on all possible closed loops the force is conservative and uh, if uh, there is some closed loop on which it is not zero then it is non conservative 
and this uh, is also equivalent to this equation is also equivalent to some mathematics is needed. What do you say point by point curl of the force is equal to 0? The symbol is read as curl of f. What is that? What is that curl of essentially if I am using Cartesian coordinates. your f is a function of x y z and that means f x is a function of x y z f y is a function of x y z and f z is a function of x y z and now you construct this quantity it is determinant i am writing i cap here j cap here k cap here then del del x here, del del y here and del del z here and f x here and f y here and f z here. You know determinant, how to open up a determinant. So, you write this, uh, this element here i cap and uh, then in algebra this multiplied by this minus this multiplied by this. Here it will be del del y of f z minus del del z of f y. So, you will write del f z del y and minus del del z of f y and then similarly you do for j cap part and you do for k cap part just as in algebra you open up this determinant and write the expression. What is this? f z, f z is a function of x y z. Now, differentiate with respect to y and treat any x and z coming in this expression as constant during this differentiation. This is called partial differentiation, partial derivative. Similarly, here f y is a function of x y z and differentiate with respect to z. So, in this expression differentiate with respect to z and treat any x and y coming in the expression as constant. Similarly, you will have uh, two partial derivatives here and two partial derivatives here. This quantity is called as a vector quantity remember so you have i cap here j cap here k cap here. So, this is a vector quantity and that vector quantity is called curl of f. So, if all these are this is 0, this is 0, this is 0, this is zero then uh, your force will be conservative. If curl of f is 0, the force is conservative. In this definition, how many closed paths you will check? it may be 0 on 10 different closed paths, but then on 11th it may not be 0. How many closed paths you can check or how many different paths between the same two points you can check, but here it is a very foolproof. If you know the force expression of force in terms of x y z do this operation and if that turns out to be 0 there is no path and uh, closed or open or this point and that point. If every for every x y z this is 0 and the expression itself will tell whether it is 0 or not the force is conservative or non conservative you can decide from here. So, this is another way of telling that a force is conservative for a conservative force curl of f is 0 at all points for a conservative force this integral f dot d l on a closed path is 0 for all paths all closed paths or between the same two points this integration is same for all paths. So, these are the ways in which you can identify whether the force is conservative or not. Why do we say that the force is conservative? If something of uh, this kind happens why is the name what is conserved why it is called conservative. So, that is on the next board. Now, if the force is conservative, I take the first uh, definition 
you have two points A and B and you say that this integration integration f dot d l on this path is independent of of the path and only depends on the end points A and B. If this is the case, it is always possible to define a scalar function. Remember, this is a scalar, this is a dot product and then you are adding. So, it is always possible to define a scalar function which we will call v x y z. So, for each point I have defined a particular v at different points you can have different values of this v. So, you can it is always possible. So, it is always possible to define a scalar function v such that right such that this integration this integration f dot d l. Now, that it is independent of path I can write a here and b here I have to go from a to b whatever path. So, I can write a and b a to b f dot d l whatever path you want to choose you can choose it does not matter. So, this quantity is equal to v at b and minus v at a and for some reasons I write it with a minus sign. Okay. So, once uh, you ensure me that this f dot d l integration between two given points a and b is independent of path, I can always come up with certain uh, you know, functional form of a scalar function v x y z. So, that this integration will be equal to the value of this v at this point b and value of this b at this point a it is always possible to do that. Okay. And then if this is the case, so this is v a and minus v b. Now, let me do a separate algebra and come out with a different result. What is that? Now, I am bringing a particle of mass m. I am bringing a particle of mass m on which this force is acting and this is the only force acting on the particle. Okay, so, this is the resultant force. So, F is the resultant force on a particle of mass m let us say what is this f dot dr f dot dl what is this f dot dl this f dot dl you can write as mass times dv dt mass times acceleration because this is the resultant force so i can use newton's second law f is equal to m times a m dv dt and then dot d l and this d t can go here and this you can write as m d v and then dot d l d t and d l d t is v. Okay. In time d t if it the displacement is d l then the velocity at that point is just this v and this is half d or let me write half also inside d of half m speed square v square. How do I write that? Go in the reverse way. What is half m v square? Half m v square this is a scalar quantity here this is also scalar quantity, but in terms of two vector quantities v vector and d v vector. 
So, how do I come to this speed square here from this vector thing? So, this you can write as half m v dot v and then you differentiate d of this d of this this will be half m and then d of this how do i do d of this product of two functions keep one function and differentiate the other one so v dot dv then keep the second function fixed and differentiate the first one so this is dv and then dot v Okay, so just that differentiation of products of two functions, keep one, differentiate other, then keep the second one and differentiate the first one. So, I am keeping this and differentiating this, here I am keeping that and differentiating this, so this is this. So, it is 2 times v dv dot v and that 2 cancels with here and you have m and v dot dv or dv dot v, so that is here that is here m dv dot v is equal to d of half m v square. Now, integrate f dot d l f dot d l on that path on that path a to b this is equal to integration d of half m v square a to b and integration of dx is just x, integration of d theta is just theta. So, integration of this will be just half m v square. So, it is half m v square and then you put the limits, the lower limit here, the upper limit here. So, it is half m v square at b and minus half m v square at a and that is kinetic energy at b and minus kinetic energy at a. So, if you have a particle on which this conservative force f is acting, then this f dot d l integration from a to b is equal to change in kinetic energy, kinetic energy at b and minus kinetic energy of at a, but the same integration I said that I can find a certainly I can find a function v which satisfies this equation. So, f dot d l integration a to b is v a minus v b. If the force is conservative I can do that. This depends only on a and b not on the path, this depends only on a and b not on the path. So, since the same integration is written in two fashions, one is here, other is here, they should be equal. So, V A minus V B should be equal to K B minus K A. V A minus V B should be equal to K B and minus K A and that means V A plus K A is equal to v b and plus k b. Now, this we name as potential energy of the particle when it is at a and this is potential energy of the particle when it is b. This v function at x y z is named as potential energy of the particle when it is at that x comma y comma z. And this uh, potential energy plus kinetic energy is called mechanical energy and if I denote it by some other symbol u which is once again function of x y z which may be a function of x y z then uh, you have this u at a is equal to u at b. So, you go from here to here, your kinetic energy is changing, but if you term this as a potential energy and add to that the total mechanical energy does not depend on x y z, it is same at this point 
n at that point so this is known as conservation of energy in mechanics this is known as conservation principle of conservation of energy and that is why the name conservative force only conservative forces will allow you to define a potential energy and uh, only then the total mechanical energy will be constant now let me take some examples and then some more questions and discussions on that let us take an example of spring force you have all studied simple harmonic motion and if uh, you have a particle connected to a spring and one end of the spring is fixed and the equilibrium position where the spring is relaxed we take that x equal to 0 and then we pull it release and it oscillates and we say that the force is minus k times x which uh, you also write as uh, minus m omega square times x and omega is written for square root of k by m. I am not going into great details because you have all studied this uh, motion very important and uh, very interesting also but let us go to the energy. Do I have something like V x? The entire motion is on x axis. So, do we have some function like this? Yes, we do have it is half k x square or half m omega square x square this is a function and the energy of this particle with this kind of force is kinetic energy which is half m v square and then plus half m omega square x square and uh, if the particle is at uh, its extreme position you know the particle oscillates if this is the if this is the kind of system and then you pull it and then release it from here it oscillates and at extreme points the velocity is 0 that is why it is extreme and therefore at extreme point at say x is equal to capital A which is the amplitude this E is equal to velocity is 0. So, this part is 0 and you have half m omega square and capital A square x is capital A. And if you write it here, if you write it here equal to half m omega square a square, you can write what is v. So, this half goes, half goes, half goes, m goes, m goes and m goes. So, you can write what is this v square, this v square is equal to this omega square is here, omega square is here and then you have a square and minus x square. So, take square root dx dt is equal to omega square root a square minus x square and now it is very simple dx by this dx divided by square root a square minus x square is equal to dx divided by this is equal to omega dt and you can integrate it very easily right you can integrate it very easily. What is that? This is sin inverse of x by a is equal to omega t plus some integration constant and that tells you x is equal to capital A sin omega t plus epsilon. So, this uh, conservation of energy principle is a quite useful principle you can see how easily I can get that displacement as a function of time, speed as a function of time, everything v as a function of x all those things we get from here. If you start from here and write this as a m times d 2 x d t square we have to do a greater algebra to reach this point. So, there are many many other applications 
of this conservation principle and the concept of potential energy. So, we will talk more about the concept of potential energy in the next lecture.